In this lecture, we will cover the definition of a programming language and the different types of languages that are important, and understand the difference between compiled versus interpreted languages. You will understand the meaning of a programming language and learn about the different types of languages and their use. This lecture is for absolute beginners, so if you have programmed before, you can skip this lecture or you can continue watching. So let's get started. So what is a programming language? A programming language is a notation for writing programs that can be executed or run by computers. Different languages have different purposes. Sometimes are like machine languages. These are interpreted directly in the hardware. So the machine language is the lowest level. It's like the exact code that the computer or device will execute. So as an example here, we have the machine code for an Intel 64 architecture machine language. As you can see, it's just a series of bytes that are understood by the CPU, can be decoded and executed by the CPU. Okay, so the next level up is the assembly languages. It's simply a thin wrapper over the corresponding machine language. So it's kind of like a one-to-one -one mapping. Like assembly language can be translated to like one machine code or maybe a series of one or two or three machine codes. As you can see with this example, moving one value to another value, jump if not zero to a label somewhere in the code. So it's really a very simplistic language. As we learn C, you will find out that this whole stuff can be due in a single symbol statement in C, for example, or even the high level languages. But this is the idea of an assembly language. It's like a one step above the machine code, something that as humans we can read and understand. Right, so moving forward, the next is called high-level languages. These are completely machine-independent. They're closer to human language and further from the machine language. So examples are like Java, C Sharp, C and C++ are all considered high-level languages. They have names for almost everything, you know, variable names, type names, functions, constants, etc. They also have certain control structures that allow you to do conditional coding. You can compare things, you can loop and iterate through things. You can define your own types and structures. Classes exist in the object-oriented ones, but for C specifically, C is not an object-oriented language. There are no classes there. The other languages like Java, C Sharp, and C++, these are considered object-oriented languages, and they have the notion of a class. But C has everything else in here except for the classes. Exceptions are also another feature of these languages. Okay, so the next kind or type of languages is the system languages. These are designed for writing low-level tasks like memory and process management. So C is considered both a system and a high-level language. When you hear somebody saying, oh, this is a low-level thing, a low-level task, a low-level program, then think of C and of the things that it, it allows you to deal with. For example, system languages allow you to deal with memory management, process management. Process here means a program, uh, and that's enough of a definition for now data transfer, caching, device drivers, even operating system level stuff like writing the kernel of the operating system. C was actually originally invented just so that most of the Unix operating system was rewritten in C. Next higher level is called scripting languages. These are generally extremely high level and powerful. Two examples I have here, the JavaScript and Python. The difference between these and the high level languages like C Sharp and C++ and C, this is considered uh, a dynamic language. So the same thing is for Python. The last thing we want to touch base on is the difference between compile languages and interpret languages. Compile languages, the name comes from the fact that when you write the code, you need to go through a process called compilation of the code. You need to compile your code. During the compilation process, before you run the app or the program, the compiler will try to find any syntax errors, any problems with your code, and it will not actually compile successfully un until you fix all the syntax errors and all the code mistakes. That's why it's called a compiled language. The nice thing about compiled languages is that you know ahead of time what kind of errors you have and try to fix them. And also, it actually allows the compiler to generate machine-specific codes. So that's the advantage of a compiled language. The next type is the interpreted language. The idea is that your code, source code, is translated during runtime. When you run the app, 
when you run the code, the interpreter starts looking at the code line by line or statement by statement. At runtime, it tries to translate it and try to execute it. The problem with this approach is that you might be surprised with some runtime errors, right? Something that a mistake or you forgot to do something. That kind of stuff is discovered at runtime late in the game. Whereas the compiled language, you capture these early on by the compiler. The interpreted language is done at runtime. The nice advantage of that is that the machine code is platform and machine independent meaning that it translates it at runtime depending on the environment it's running on and executes based on that the other disadvantage of an interpreted language is usually slower than a compiled language because the process of translating from source code to machine code happens at runtime during execution versus the compiled language that translation happens one time at the compilation and then you end up with a running executable that you can run immediately when you want to run it Okay, so as a summary to recap, we said that C is a high level and a system level, meaning low level programming language. It's a very powerful language. You can do both low level and high level stuff using C. The nice thing about high level languages are they increase your productivity. C is a compiled language. It's not an interpreted language. The compiler is very useful at catching syntax errors early on. The compiled code is machine processor specific. So that's basically what we touched base on in, in this lecture. I hope this is useful so that you can move on with the, with the course. Alright, so next uh, we're going to touch base quickly on the C language history, how it was created and who created it, and quickly talk about some aspects of the language in the next lecture. See you then.